the other guy pick the mic? One is there. He picked the mic. Yeah. The second one is this guy. Good afternoon. Welcome to this press conference. Uh, welcome to our speakers today, FIFA President Gianni Infantino and Mr. Patel, All India Football Federation. We will start with uh, two uh, introductions. First with uh, FIFA President Mr. Infantino and then Mr. Patel and then the floor will be yours for the questions. President. Thank you. Very much, uh, Fabrice. Uh, so, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, representatives of, of the media in India and all over the world, uh, let me just first of all express uh, my extreme happiness to be here in Kolkata today. Uh, we have had, we've celebrated the um, uh, council meeting, and tomorrow we will uh, watch all together the finals uh, of a very, very successful under-17 FIFA World Cup. We have been uh, welcomed uh, here and I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Praful Patel, the President of the All India Football Federation. We've been welcomed here in India in a very warm way and the hospitality has been absolutely uh, fantastic. I've even heard that uh, they have put a little bit less spice in the food so that we can eat it as well. Well, it was very, very tasty so far, so thanks, thanks very much, but it's true to say as well that uh, the Under-17 has been a resounding uh, um, success with some records that have already been broken uh, and that I'm sure uh, Praful will mention and uh, that's why we are extremely happy as uh, we were saying, India is uh, a continent, uh, not only a country and uh, uh, we have seen, and I said this uh, immediately as I landed that um, I now really have the feeling that uh, India has also become a football country or a football continent and we have seen this also by the attendance on all the matches and the way it was perceived by um, the World Cup was perceived by the whole population. So again, thank you very, very much. Uh, on the other topics, let me just mention briefly some uh, of the decisions which have been taken by the Council today. Um, we have uh, decided on the price money for the FIFA World Cup next year in uh, Russia uh, with an increase compared to the last World Cup in Brazil of 12%. So we move from 358 million US dollars to 400 million US dollars price money um, for the teams participating in the World Cup. So I think this is also a positive sign in terms of the healthy situation uh, financial of FIFA. And it's also right to reward those teams which qualify and then uh, progress in, um, in the World Cup. Uh, the Council as well, and speaking about World Cups, that's also important, ratified the decision of the Bureau of the Council, which was taken on the 6th of September, to approve the enhanced bidding regulations for the 2026 World Cup. Uh, 
in addition to appointing the members of the bid evaluation task force, uh, the bid regulations, the bidding regulations are of course a milestone in uh, uh, not only FIFA's history, but I think really the history of sports organizations and the way bidding processes are conducted. But it's only natural that we do so because uh, of the happenings of uh, the past. We want to make sure that the bidding process for 2026 is absolutely bulletproof and for this reason we have made uh, uh, very stringent regulations in terms of compliance and good governance. The Council has also decided um, to establish a FIFA foundation. Uh, FIFA, as uh, the world governing body of uh, football, has of course a duty to develop as well corporate social responsibility activities, charity activities, and uh, we feel that the best way to do that is by having a dedicated foundation which is in charge of this particular part of FIFA's mission. It is uh, important that uh, uh, we do these activities and it is important as well that uh, this is done by a dedicated entity, a foundation which will collect funds and which will of course then also distribute them into uh, charitable projects and uh, we have already many football legends on board in this exciting project. We have also started uh, the discussions and the consultation phase on some other strategic uh, projects of FIFA, in particular the youth competitions, the future of the youth competitions after 2020. Uh, we have tabled some proposals, some ideas, and we will uh, discuss them with a view of taking then a decision in March. For example, when it comes to the youth competition, uh, the idea would be to have an increase, uh, an increased number of participants for the boys uh, up to 48, like for the men, and for the girls up to 24 teams. These competitions would be played on an annual basis rather than every two years and instead of having under 17 and under 20 there will be only one age category which could be under 18 or under 19. This is uh, just an idea which will be now debated and discussed. Of course with such a high number of teams we are looking as well at co-hosting in order to give the possibility to many associations uh, around the world smaller associations as well to host maybe part or together with others to host such a big um, event. On the women's as well we have um, launched uh, the idea that I mentioned already at the last FIFA Congress in May of uh, a women's world league. I think we need to develop women's football further. We need to recognize uh, that uh, uh, there is an appeal for national team football at women's level and there is an investment that is made by FIFA and by many associations and we have to encourage this by uh, looking at new formats and new uh, competitions and also this will be discussed and debated in the coming months. And similarly we have been looking at the club tournaments. Uh, we have, as you know, coming up the Club World Cup in uh, Abu Dhabi, in the UAE. Uh, next month and uh, we have to look into the future of this competition or the future of club competitions and club football in the world. Uh, the world being of course not only Europe and South America but really the whole world and that's why it's good to debate and to discuss different ideas and different models. The challenge obviously when you speak about club football and uh, World Cup in this respect, uh, independently of how many teams will participate and so on, is how and where to fit it into the international match calendar. This is of course a challenge, but uh, uh, we are there to tackle the challenges and to discuss them and to see what is the best approach in this uh, respect without charging more uh, the calendar. So we would have to look at uh, abolishing some competitions in order to add another one. We will uh, debate this in the next few months. Um, I'm sure people will write about it as well. Uh, people will have their own opinions about all of these topics. 
uh, and we will then come back in March uh, at the Council and decide what to do going forward. We've also approved uh, tournament dates uh, for the Under-20 Women's World Cup in France. will take place between the 15th and 24th of August next year. The Under-17 Women's World Cup in Uruguay next year will take place between 13 November and 1st of December. And the Club World Cup in UAE next year as well, between 12th and 22nd of December. And finally, the Women's World Cup in France in 2019 between the 7th of June and the 7th of uh, July. Um, finally, uh, we have also uh, taken a decision on uh, the report of the FIFA Monitoring Committee on Israel and Palestine. And uh, you have received, or you are going to receive soon, you are going to receive, you are going to receive of course, the wording, the precise wording of the decision which, um, um, which was taken uh, with regard in particular to the administration of football in uh, the West Bank um, territories. Basically, basically, and I have to uh, just, I want just to, to summarize it in, in, in a few words, the Council has uh, of course taken note of all the different documents of the whole history. When uh, the chairman of the monitoring talk committee, Tokyo Sexuale, presented it, he was speaking about issues which are there since 10,000 years and have not been solved yet. Um, so we are, our football is not going to solve them either, I'm afraid. Uh, taking into account all this, including uh, as well the UN Security Council Resolution 2334, which comprises recommendations, but no coercive measures, no sanctions. Uh, but FIFA cannot take a position, of course, on, this, uh, on the content of such um, um, documents. The situation currently in what has to do with football, which is what FIFA has to uh, care about, is uh, characterized by an exceptional complexity and a great sensitivity due to certain de facto circumstances that uh, cannot be ignored and that can also not be um, changed unilaterally by a non-governmental body like FIFA. I think we see that where our limits unfortunately are. So these territories are obviously a concern for the competent international public law authorities and uh, FIFA has to remain neutral with regard to uh, political uh, matters. It was also felt by the Council that any interference by FIFA in the state to quo in these territories, in the whole area, uh, with regard to football, would have or could have an aggravating effect on the current circumstances, because football is played uh, with some difficulties, but football is played and any interference there could aggravate the football situations, not only in the territories, but also in the greater regions, and this would not be in the interests of uh, the game. Therefore, the Council has decided to refrain from imposing uh, any sanctions um, and uh, declare the matter closed uh, until uh, the legal and or the de facto framework has changed. Having said that, of course, we should not forget that some progress has been made in the last few years in uh, the area of Palestine and Israel with regard to the movement of players, officials and football equipment in and out and within uh, Palestine. And these aspects will, of course, continue. Uh, the FIFA administration will, of course, continue in this uh, work to help a smooth running of football or as smooth as possible running of football in uh, uh, this area. This is uh, what I had to say to start with, and uh, I give the floor to the President of the All India Football Federation. 
Thank you, President Gianni, and uh, welcome to all the friends from the media here this afternoon. I take uh, this opportunity to formally welcome our President of FIFA, Gianni Infantino, and uh, the entire FIFA Council for the first ever FIFA meeting in India. And I also thank FIFA for awarding us the first ever... I <laughs> yes, I, I, I must acknowledge that uh, I made a request to the President uh, that uh, you must hold a FIFA Council meeting in India for the reasons a little selfish that the world must focus on India. As he rightly said, we are not just a country. We almost represent a sixth of the world's population. We are a continent by ourselves. And to give that extra focus on behalf of our parent body to this country, to our continent, I requested him and I am very grateful that he readily acknowledged and he has kept his word and I would sincerely like to extend my gratitude and thanks on behalf of the people of India, the football lovers of India, the players of India and of course on behalf of the All India Football Federation. I also thank FIFA for giving us the first ever FIFA tournament and this is I would say the beginning a renaissance of Indian football and I greatly take the words uh, with uh, a lot of, I would say, satisfaction when uh, the President arrived yesterday. He said uh, that uh, not only did he arrive in India, but he said India has arrived as a footballing nation. And that is, uh, speaks volumes of uh, the confidence which he has reposed in us. And uh, I'm very happy to say, as he's already said it, but once again, that uh, this has been the most successful World Cup Under-17 ever held in all the editions so far. And the number of people who have been flocking to the stadiums, and mind you, not just cheering for the Indian team, but for all participating teams, is a matter of great satisfaction because it shows that people in India, and especially young India, wants good football. And they don't mind supporting anybody who just does that. This is a reflection also that uh, times are changing. And I was very happy that I got an invitation to meet and to be present in the FIFA Council meeting this morning, where I not only welcomed all the members, but I also made a request on behalf of India that once we have this under-17 program which has started, this World Cup is getting over tomorrow, but we cannot stop with this, we cannot rest on the laurels of having had a World Cup under-17 and be happy about it. This entire exercise must continue, the show must go on. And I once again formally request the President in, the, in your presence, which I have done this morning in the Council meeting, that India is looking forward to hosting the World Cup Under-20 in 2019. I know there are many countries which would like to host these tournaments, and rightly so. But again, I repeat that India, if you look at it again, as you rightly said, as a continent, and to continue this momentum which we have gathered now, to continue this run of ours, we have to have another major tournament which will keep the aspirations and the interest of every section alive. So I don't want to go into too much of detail except to say that uh, this has been a great learning experience for us. President, we have uh, now delivered on giving good infrastructure because I think over the years that was one of the major concerns and I'm sure all your officials who have been you know, present for the tournament are very happy that uh, this uh, tournament has been able to be delivered in the right way by India. And therefore, on behalf of All India Federation, Football Federation, I would like to request you to continue to support us as you have always done. 
and I am very happy that we have in him a president who understands exactly. I, I, I think I just start and he picks up the rest and he completes the whatever I have in mind. So I don't want to take further time. Once again, I would like to announce also that we are bidding for the World Cup under 20. Formally, we have put in a bid. That is one part. The second thing which I discussed with the President and for the media, it is also important because President, we are looking at setting up a center of excellence to host, be home to the national team at all category levels, senior and sub uh, uh, categories, and also the Indian women's football team. And we have uh, uh, to take that decision very soon. I will, of course, tell you at the right time where it is coming up. But I certainly feel that uh, India does need a center of excellence and I'm sure FIFA would be helping us at least for the technical part and in whatever other capacity you would be happy to do so. We are always waiting to hear from you. Once again, thank you very much and for coming here to India, not only yourself but to bring the entire council and we assure you that our hospitality will be as spicy as you like it, but it certainly will be tasty. So you please uh, be rest assured about India's ability to deliver and we look forward to your continued support. Thank you very much. There are still two matches to deliver, Mr. President, as yes. well. <laughs> that we can be a surprise for you to come here and see it. That is good. So the message is forget cricket, football is the future in India. No, I'm joking. Huh? No, no. But football is, football is the future. And uh, of course, India is a priority for FIFA, obviously. Thank you. It's time for your question. May I kindly ask you to introduce yourself, mention the name of your organization, and to who? is your question. Thank you. We start with Oleg, second row. Oleg Kosh. Oleg Kosh, lift us. Oleg Kosh, lift us, News Agency, Russia. A uh, question to Mr. Infantin. Uh, during the meeting, it was mentioned a list of countries which still haven't bought TV rights for the upcoming World Cup, and the host country is among them. Uh, how close is the situation to be solved? I mean, concerning Russia, of course. It's uh, crucial that uh, uh, we conclude uh, uh, the TV rights agreement uh, for Russia as the host country that is uh, uh, obvious for many reasons. It's crucial for FIFA, but it's also crucial for Russia, for the Russian people, for the Russian broadcasters. And I'm extremely confident that uh, um, we are very, very, very close to uh, reaching an agreement and to being able to work full speed for a successful delivery of the World Cup. This should be happening very soon. Hello. Last row. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. President Infantino, I would like to ask you about the recognition of the Intercontinental Cup champions and the future, the possibility of this competition returns. And the second question about the 2014 World Cup legacy program. When Brazil could receive the amount blocked? Thank you. Well, on the 24, um, 2014 legacy program for uh, Brazil, um, uh, we have decided that uh, a, a special organization, special entity will be set up in uh, Brazil in order to be able to uh, deliver on the legacy program which was promised um, many years ago, before the World Cup already, and has been blocked for several reasons. We have now found the right, the right way. Uh, now we have to establish uh, this entity and the technicalities uh, from the legal point of view and then uh, Brazil can benefit from uh, uh, the legacy program for the World Cup. This should happen also very soon, uh, at the latest, the beginning of next year. And uh, the first question on the, uh, on the Intercontinental um, Cup, 
Well, as you know, uh, between 1960 and, and 2004, there was a so-called intercontinental cup organized by two confederations uh, with the approval of FIFA, uh, Conmebol and UEFA. Uh, this has then uh, evolved, so to say, in the FIFA Club World Cup, which, is, which has started in 2004, and uh, the, the next tournament will be played in the UAE uh, next month. Um, as I was saying, we start now a reflection on uh, how club football should be in the future uh, developed all over the world. We have uh, very strong leagues. We have in some parts of the world, we have very strong continental competitions in some parts of the world. And we have uh, clubs, leagues and competitions in other parts of the world which want as well to become strong and which want to invest as well and for this reason uh, as time evolves and as we move into the future it is the duty of FIFA to analyze uh, these situations and to see whether we can come up with uh, something special, something new, uh, something that does not harm obviously the international match calendar but that will help club football as well and confederations all around the world to develop and to take a next stage. In the 60s there were only two confederations which were doing that uh, and now I think we need to look at uh, clubs from all over the world and we need to see whether we can find something uh, positive. Um, when FIFA embarks and organizes a competition then it should be something special. So either we can find something special uh, a special tournament, and this is also a little bit uh, uh, the DNA of FIFA, uh, or uh, you know, we rather don't uh, we rather don't do it. The current Club World Cup is a nice uh, competition, but it has not really the impact that maybe was hoped in terms of development of club football and investment in club football all around the world. So let's see what the future brings us. Any good ideas are always welcome. Marcus Harm from ZDF, and then we go to Japan with Kyodo News. First, Marcus. Um, yeah, you mentioned my name already, so I don't have to um, introduce myself. Mr. President, Miguel Maduro said in front of British Parliament that you and your General Secretary got involved in the Mutko case. Um, is that the conflict of interest, or how would you describe it? Is the first question, and the second question is, uh, the best on Monday, uh, how expensive was it, and who really designed the logo for the best, and who designed the new uh, slogan for FIFA? Was there an official tender for it? Well, I have, I have full respect for what everyone says um, uh, about processes and uh, discussions and decisions uh, when it comes to different concrete situations I of course have opinions and uh, uh, when I'm asked I share these opinions as well uh, having said that those persons who are in charge of uh, the bodies in FIFA they have always taken the decisions that they esteemed the right decisions to take whether they were right or wrong legally or not doesn't matter they were taking decisions that uh, that they wanted um, independently and that uh, there are always discussions um, I think this is something which is absolutely normal and um, and natural uh, as to the costs of the best uh, I don't know it uh, by heart it was, it was 4.5 million, which is less than uh, the previous one, and we hope, this is the objective that was set to the administration, that this event, which is a very nice football event, can uh, you know, also generate some revenues to be then reinvested in uh, football. Thank you. Which question? The logo. I don't know what the, the logo is. It looks nice. Uh, that's a question for the administration. I don't know how the processes are, are made, but I like it. 
it's a very nice uh, it's a very nice event you even gave the idea of the ball because it's the first it's the form the shape of the first ball of the first World Cup in 1930 so it brings history in the future as well I like that part This is Kenta Rotsuchiya from Kyoto News. A uh, question for President. I have two questions. Uh, you mentioned to reform yeah, youth category and women football and club world cup. So how about the confederation cup? So how about the next edition confederation? How do you think about it? And one, one more question for I. I'd like to rec uh, reconfirm to Tokyo Olympics the the allocation, allocation for the Tokyo Olympics. Correct, you're right. We confirmed uh, the allocation for the Tokyo Olympic Games um, for the football tournaments. And uh, by the way, I can make this uh, uh, here as well public uh, that there was a request by the council and I will address it, um, I have to say, again to the IOC, uh, which is to have a higher number of players participating because it is very difficult to have such a tournament where you play every second day with only 18 uh, only 18 players um, so the allocation is there and uh, we should publish it uh, as well Mr. Zhuo it's going to be published uh, today it's going to be published today the second question about the Confederations Cup yes well that's also one of these questions what should happen with uh, the Confederations Cup, which today is there, it's in the calendar, it's, it's foreseen. Um, and I think as part of the overall uh, analysis of the competitions of FIFA, uh, you see, for example, one option could have been or would be or could be to, instead of the Confederations Cup, play a club uh, competition, uh, a club championship a club world cup so we don't uh, have additional dates uh, no additional burdens um, and um, we do something different uh, to develop club football because we have the world cup to develop national team football as well all over the world so that's an idea but let's see we will uh, discuss it and then we will take a decision in march of, uh, of next year Let's turn the game to the left. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Deepak. I'm from uh, Press Trust of India. Uh, my name is Deepak. I'm from Press Trust of India. So now India has, a, has made a bid for this Under-20 World Cup uh, in 2019. So what is uh, FIFA's idea in this? Because especially uh, the last edition was held in South Korea. It's 2017. Yes, this year, this year the two World Cups were, were held in uh, Asia, uh, in Korea, very successful under 20, in India, very successful under 17. We have now uh, received several requests from several countries um, all around the world for the hosting of these uh, competitions in uh, 2019. This will now be analyzed uh, by the um, uh, FIFA administration and then uh, presented to council for um, for decision for 19 and then after 19 uh, that's the also important what I was saying before is maybe we change then the complete format uh, of our competitions and uh, uh, there it can be interesting for many countries for a big country like India on its own and for other smaller countries maybe joining with others to be able to organize uh, such a use World Cup AFP, please. Uh, thank you, President. Tim Witcher from AFP. This week, a judge in New York jailed the first jailed the first dependent in the in the corruption scandal. I wonder if you have any comments on this. I mean, you're not involved, but whether you, FIFA has a comment on this. And in doing so, the judge said that the the defendant had uh, destroyed confidence in FIFA. And I'm wondering how how far we've gone in re-establishing that since then. I mean, can you? Tell us how much the how how much harder the bidding conditions are now for 2026 and, and further competitions. 
Well, the bidding conditions are extremely much harder. Uh, you can, they are published uh, or publicly available, so you can uh, you can see them, you can you can read them, and you make your, you can make yourself your own idea about it. But they are very stringent um, in terms of uh, compliance, in terms of good governance, uh, in terms of what can and cannot be done. Uh, there will be a technical report, uh, which again, for the first time in FIFA's history will have the consequence of even eliminating bidders who will not comply with some minimum um, requirements. Uh, there is a whole process uh, which will also be accompanied and is also for the first time uh, by an independent external auditor who will uh, supervise the whole process. So I think we have done whatever is humanly possible to do in order to ensure uh, a solid um, bidding process. As to the first case, uh, you know, these are cases of the past. I don't want to speak about the past, I want to speak about the future. I already thanked all the authorities, be it the Americans or uh, from any other part of the world who have uh, uh, uncovered certain malpractices in football. As far as FIFA is concerned, these things, they cannot happen anymore. We have put in place um, systems uh, and processes that uh, make sure that uh, uh, everything that we do is in line with uh, all the requirements that need to be, that need to be fulfilled. So we work for the future, and uh, when I look at uh, uh, you know, one indicator of uh, uh, how the perception of FIFA is in the world is uh, what commercial impact it has. And uh, when I see that two years ago FIFA could not even probably speak to any broadcaster or any potential sponsor, uh, because it was considered to be a, a toxic mark. Well, today the doors are open, the revenues come in, and we will exceed uh, the budget, certainly, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, revenues. At the same time, we are much, much more transparent in terms of costs, which again shows where these revenues are going. I think we went a uh, very, very long way. And Again, uh, I say this in all uh, humility and modesty because for me these are things which go without saying and everything can be uh, checked and looked in, uh, uh, in our website and uh, publicly. Uh, we go twice to the last row. First gentleman with the microphone, then gentleman with the pink shirt. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Infantino, hi, I'm Dhiman. I work for the Hindustan Times newspaper. Uh, you mentioned that uh, a decision would be taken on the 2019 uh, in the due course of time. Could you specify when that would happen? And does the fact that India pulled off a successful World Cup better chances, better their chances of hosting back-to-back -back Youth World Cups? I don't know. <laughs> it's certainly an element which will be considered. There are other elements as well which will be considered. Uh, we expect to take a decision uh, uh, at the beginning of next year in terms of for 2019. And then for 2020 and onwards, we will take a decision in October of uh, 2018. Uh, President, last year in Goa, you had rebranded Indian football as a passionate giant rather than sleeping giant. And now you are saying that India has arrived at global football scene. So where are you? Sorry, I cannot. Yeah, see sorry. Ah, sorry. Yeah. So uh, even if uh, under 19 World Cup doesn't come to India, what would be your advice for Indian football and a road ahead? Well, in this case, uh, I would come to India myself, and together with Praful, we organize a match with the journalists, and uh, we promote uh, football for all. <laughs> in India, not only the Mission 11 million, but also uh, the Mission 11 journalists against a uh, few of us, and we make a big impact uh, with that. Now, obviously, we need to, uh, we need to cherish what has been built up with this competition and in general with the work of the whole India football 
federation and football in India more generally. It is complex, it's not easy, I, I understand and I commend really the work which is done by Praful and his team. And we need to have ideas and projects that we can uh, develop uh, all together. I mean, I would say even independently of a World Cup or not, it's not about just organizing a competition, it's about leaving a legacy and building on that and having something sustainable and putting the football culture really in the heads of uh, uh, all uh, the Indians. And I can confirm, I mean, when, it, when we have seen, when we see the attendance figures, but also when we have seen what has happened when the game, the semi-final was moved uh, here to Kolkata, where uh, the ticketing system broke down because we had, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands of uh, requests or maybe one million of yeah, tickets, close to, a million. to close to a million of ticket requests. Well, then you can see that when I was speaking more about the passion giant, well, this is true passion for football. On our right, Hello. Hi, this is Rohit from Mail Today. My question is for the President. What is the potential that you, s no, you, you. Yes, I, I'm sorry. Uh, so, what is the potential that you see in India in terms of the game, and what has been the motivation behind uh, FIFA investing so much in in India over the years? Well, you know, India is uh, uh, represents uh, one sixth of the world population. India is uh, a country or a continent, as I was saying, uh, which is uh, certainly a sports country. You like sport, you love sports in general. Uh, there is uh, a passion, there is now as well a will from the Indians themselves to embark and invest in football because of the many benefits that uh, uh, football brings. It's not just about organizing a show or a competition. It is about work with youths, with boys, with girls, with women, about bringing them from the schools also to do some activities, to football pitches, making them enjoy, making them play, use football uh, and the values of football to, for what they are, which is uh, to teach as well respect, respect for the referee, respect for the opponent, respect for the rules, and all these elements that, that are so important in, um, in our game and uh, uh, I think that when we see the potential that there is in uh, India and if we have to take our task at FIFA seriously of developing football then we have no other choice than saying okay we want to uh, help football grow sustainably in India because the whole world will benefit from that. It's not only for India, it's for the whole world. President, I'll just add a little to this because there's a lot of Indian media and I'm sure they're very keen to know. You see, the biggest challenge for us, and that's what we're trying to do, President, is to change the demographics of football in India. Right now, football is played very passionately, keenly, but we do not have a pan-India footprint which is, I would say, equal. So while we have some parts of the country where football is very prominently played, including where we are in Kolkata and West Bengal or the Northeast or in some other parts of the country like Goa and Kerala and so on, we need to make the demographics of football being played in India across the length and breadth. And once we do that, I can assure you that we will be even more successful in all of what we are planning to do. And the second thing is, one of the great legacies which this uh, World Cup will leave behind for us is that our ability to have better infrastructure, and my, these are just six venues where we are playing, but I can assure you that while we speak, there could have been equally another six venues which were ready and compliant to host the World Cup. So that has changed. We, uh, five years back, we probably would not have been able to produce even one FIFA-approved world-class stadium. And that is changing very fast. And therefore, we would like to do this on a more equal footing across the country. And the second thing, 
I must assure you as something as a matter of your understanding is that young India, the age group of say 18 and below, you will be happy to know that they like and play more football than cricket or any other game. So that, very, very happy to know. So yes, I am sure you will be very happy to know that. And that's why this will change the moment you will see these kids growing up. So I think that's why one of the reasons it's not about anything except to keep this momentum alive that we wish a continued support coming from FIFA. Gary Meenan from The National in Abu Dhabi. Um, how are talks progressing with in regards to the suspension of the Kuwaiti FA and are you confident uh, or is it likely that they'll be lifted before the start of the Gulf Cup at the end of December? Well, I would hope that uh, the suspension be lifted uh, today as far as I'm concerned. Uh, nobody likes to have uh, suspended member associations. Uh, talks are going on. Uh, unfortunately, they are, they are going on since quite some time already. And I think that the parties know what uh, the requirements are in order to for this um, uh, ban by FIFA to be lifted. So as soon as these conditions are uh, fulfilled, um, it will take a few minutes and the ban will be lifted. The two last questions, second row here and then last row there. Uh, my question is to sir, uh, I have uh, two questions sir. <laughs> First of all that uh, when you give a uh, chance to India to be host of under 17 World Cup, of course there is some reason. So just before of the final, do you think that, uh, do you believe that the every reason has fulfilled one and the number two is, sir did you get chance to watch India's match in this tournament if you watched? What's your opinion to see the performance, I mean, standard of the Indian football in this World Cup? Yes, I've watched, uh, I've watched some matches on TV uh, of uh, the Indian national team and, and I think uh, in spite of the three defeats, but they performed uh, well. You can still see, of course, uh, that there is a gap, that there is a difference, but it's not as big as uh, uh, one could have feared maybe um, a few years ago because also I think of the work which which was, which was done with the young kids who fought uh, incredibly well and went very close to, to a couple of um, um, surprises. So the level, I think, is, is, is good and it has just to improve and uh, the work has just to, um, to continue. When the decision was taken uh, to host this World Cup here, I was not in FIFA, so I don't know what uh, the... Uh, key requirements were what I can say now that I am in FIFA uh, having seen uh, the World Cup uh, and having uh, witnessed it and uh, hopefully tomorrow everything will run smoothly as well is that it was um, what we have hoped for indeed uh, which is uh, a success for the public a success for the teams with some complications as you will have always in, in any big uh, competition and event and uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the all-time uh, attendance record which for under-17, uh, which dated from 1985 in China, will be certainly broken tomorrow um, uh, with more than uh, 1.2 million tickets sold or attendant, uh, people in attendance. And, and uh, India could even beat, uh, depending on how many, spectators come up tomorrow, the record, the absolute record of the under-20, uh, which was in Colombia, which was 1.3 million. Um, so I think we are very close and uh, we'll have to count each spectator coming in to see uh, if we are above uh, that we will, threshold. We, we will make sure. <laughs> that would be a nice, uh, a nice achievement, certainly. Thank you. So, last row, and uh, sorry, I lied. The last question will be far row for Mr. Kunti. A question to President, FIFA President, that uh, uh, we heard a news that uh, Indian football skipper will carry over the trophy in the final, uh, the, in the final, after the final in tomorrow in Kolkata to Vardikriangan. Is it true? If it, it will true, it will be the great moment of Indian football. 
And the question to Mr. AIFA President, Mr. Patel, that who will be uh, present? Who will present the trophy to the winning team according to the FIFA protocol? The only one who can touch the trophy without winning it is the FIFA president. <laughs> That's one of the very, 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 very few privileges that the FIFA president has. <laughs> Hi, uh, Sam from Inside World Football. Um, at the last Congress, you said that the uh, Council would take a decision in the autumn on the Palestine-Israel um, issue. Um, so that should have been today, but do you acknowledge that delaying the decision again undermines FIFA's credibility in terms of public perception because it seems to imply that FIFA is okay with Israeli clubs playing um, in occupied Palestine territories and that's 100% a footballing issue. And secondly, um, Palestine has taken this to CAS um, with a verdict expected in January. Um, so what would that mean for FIFA and would you possibly have to organize um, an extraordinary Congress? Thank you. Well, you put many assumptions uh, on the table. Uh, let me start by the end, uh, which is that any CAS ruling, any CAS decision would be implemented by FIFA, whatever the CAS decision is. Uh, the second point is that it's not correct what uh, you stated, uh, and that's why I think I expressed myself very clearly as well. It's not about FIFA being fine or not fine, that there are clubs playing or not playing in uh, territories which uh, uh, are considered um, by the UN resolution as occupied territory. That's not the question. FIFA Council has taken a decision, has not been late. A decision has taken a decision, and the decision is to close the matter. Um, that because it was felt, as I was saying, that some progress had been made, that at least some football is played in that region, also thanks to the work which is done by the FIFA Monitoring Committee, and that any other decision in this uh, particular time would uh, affect even more the progress which had been made, uh, especially if not all the parties would be in agreement uh, with that. So a decision has been taken and uh, we move it uh, now from, from there. Thank you very much to everyone. We wish you a pleasant afternoon and a nice evening. Goodbye. And a great final tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>